salli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Once upon a time, quite some years ago, Al-Azhar University woke up one morning. Al-Azhar University was the premier institution of Islamic learning, the Muslim world. But Al-Azhar University woke up one morning and looked out in the distance and they saw something strange out there. It startled them. It was new. It was strange. It was mysterious. And as Al-Azhar looked more and more, it looked dangerous. It was something called Cairo University. <laughs> Where is our Egyptian brother? It was something called, this before you were born. <laughs> it was something called Cairo University. And it didn't drop out of the sky. It was secular education planting itself at the face of Al Azhar to offer the mother of all challenges. <laughs> And secular education has continued to offer the mother of all challenges from that day to this day. And the response from Islamic education is still awaited. We have not as yet had the response from Islamic education. Along came Jamal Abdul Nasser <laughs> and he brought a medical university into Al Azhar and started putting a few uh, different uh, secular education in Al Azhar and that was not a response. No. So a Cairo University has continued to rule the roast. Fortunately that we have with us Ambassador Rose who, unlike you youngsters, is an elderly man. But more than that, he's been an ambassador for many years, retired now. He has had a chance to see the world. He has had the best secular education you could get. <laughs> And at the end of the day, and at the end of his career, he's appalled by what he sees. Appalled. That the Islamic response to modern secular education is still awaited. Still awaited. In Malaysia, you have something called the Pati Islam. And the equivalent in Egypt would be Ikhwan and so on. And he looked at this Islamic political response and he's not happy by what he sees. No. And he says that from the top to the bottom, everything is now secularized. Mm -hmm. And so he came all the way from Malaysia, an ambassador. And he says he wants to sit with you in little groups, maybe underneath a tree out there in the shade, so he can chat with you. So you'll get from him a glimpse, a glimpse of the world in which you're now entering. Hmm? So I want to invite Ambassador Rose before my wife comes and scolds me again for being casually dressed. <laughs> not supposed to be here now. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Tariq was so, supposed to be taking you as so casually dressed. I want to invite Ambassador Adlan Rose to first of all make a brief presentation of the world today as he sees it, the mess that is the world today as he sees it. And then I want you to chat with him <coughs> and question him and offer your comments with him to him. So that in today's session, as we are waiting on Tariq to come, today's session, we see the mess that the world is today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. 
wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin ashraf anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain Izaminan Zmalana Shaykh Imran Hussein our brothers from South Africa host to the International Islamic Retreat brothers and sisters in Islam I thank the Molawana for inviting me to have a few words to fill the time before our guest speaker comes. I just had a chat with him. He summoned me to his cabin over there, asking about the situation in Malaysia. There I was explaining to him my feelings, my observation, my unhappiness as I see uh, in Malaysia, in my own country but which is also reflected in other countries and some of which I had served in and uh, it is what he mentioned secularism I started as I mentioned to some of you that I met earlier I don't have to go very far I looked at my own education at nine years old I went to a public school in Malaysia public school run along the public schools of Britain and our teachers were from Wales, England, Scotland and I was taught at nine years old to sing Yankee Doodle come to town you know. <laughs> <laughs> the Ken John Peel with his coat so grey all about people in red coats hunting foxes and what has that got to do with me? I come from the village in Malaysia <laughs> from nine years old and I told people afterwards, when I began to realize this, I was taught to quote by heart, and I learned to quote by heart, and I understood fully pages and pages of Shakespeare, hmm. but I did not know the Quran. Secular education. That was in colonial times, my time, in the 50s. So at that public school, we had rudimentary Islamic education, if you like, by a not very highly qualified Islamic teacher and taught up to about 12 years old to do what you call the, uh, the basics of Islam, of Fadu Ain, how to pray, told you about fasting, going to the Hajj, and that, that sort of thing. No interpretation of the Quran, just reading, you know, without any uh, teaching of its full meaning and so on. A road learning in other words. I observed that after independence, regretfully, the situation didn't change. I.e., although we're now independent, the school system remained the same in that children were still taught Fardu Ain up to about 12 years old and that's where it stopped. The belief was that if you fill up the child with as much Fardu Ain as possible, then the hope is he can carry on himself throughout his life, inshallah. But as I explained to a lot of people, you should explain to a child to understand the meaning of Allah Ta'ala is a master of everything, yes? Bali Kiyal Middin and so on, yes. You have to do right, you get punished otherwise. Explain to a young child, uh, hellfire, brimstone in hell, that's enough for his age. You don't explain to him the meaning of Iman, Taqwa, what is happiness in Islam, what is freedom in Islam, what is human rights, what is justice in Islam, concepts which can only be understood by a child when he's more mature. Just as a child, uh, he goes to school at primary age, you teach him two plus two equals four, you don't teach him principles of Einstein's theory of relativity, he won't understand. You teach him algebra, mathematics, additional mathematics, and so on, until he gets to university, then perhaps you can explain to him concepts of uh, science and learning that could be understood at that age. Similarly with this stuff, what I'm saying, it hasn't changed. That is a derivative from colonial days. And so, in addition, in addition, yes, 
the whole system of uh, government and life left to us is the Westminster system. Yes, you have a constitution. Ours was based, by the way, on the experience of India and Pakistan who attained their independence earlier than us. So Westminster style constitution, Western jurisprudence, Roman law, Islamic way of life, the Sharia, and afterthought, if you like. And that's where it is. And you are independent. So that today is as secular as possible. A lot of people think you go to Malaysia or so many mosques, Alhamdulillah. But they don't really know from the inside what it truly is. Now, this I observe is the same experience as that gone through by other countries under the colonial system. Whether it was Dutch in Indonesia, Suriname, whether it was uh, Belgium, Congo, India, Pakistan, and the British Bangladesh. Yes. Started by the West in the 15th century. It's the same experience. Islamic way of life destroyed, replaced by Western type, Westminster type constitution, way of life, and so on, to this day. As Marana asked earlier on, what is the Islamic response to this? My view is, speaking from, from Malaysia, I'm afraid it's I will guess it's right. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Inadequate. Or no response at all. I asked the question, where are the centers of learning of Islam today? I was in Cairo, I served Cairo in, in Egypt, three and a half years. Al Azhar was our premier center of learning. And it has gone down for one reason or another and replaced by other universities with uh, secular orientation. And so we have no response uh, with the presence of centers of learning with the highest quality in any of the Muslim lands, Baghdad, Syria, Fez, Morocco, where, where are they? Today you want to learn Islam, you go to the center of learning in Oxford. <laughs> you go to, to Michigan University, Templeton. <laughs> I think you get the thrust of what I'm trying to say. And uh, this, what Marana is, has founded, i.e. The retreat is to be welcomed a thousand times. This is the way I can see for myself that there is a, a dearth, a want, a, a yearning for true learning, yes, to be imparted. And as you said, I'm an old man now, <laughs> compared to all of you that I see, you are the future. Yes, this learning imparted by him and eminent scholars here present is the way to the future. And you spoke about the, the presence of the internet. While this is used by our inverted commas enemy to infiltrate to know what we're doing, who we are, it can also be used by us to impart our knowledge and bring our own togetherness in our struggle. Yes, this is a hope for the future. Yes, with those brief words, I, I end this uh, discussion for the moment. I have a presentation tomorrow, inshallah. All right, but you're going to make sure.